do a book binding tutorial for a very long time, but I haven't been really making any books lately. Uh, quarantine I thought would be a great time to make a bunch of books, but instead I had a baby and I just was focused on my baby and I didn't really do any music or any book binding. But today I got a message from somebody asking um, for a tutorial or demonstration or instructions on how to bind books. And so I thought, oh, this is a really good day. I'm not doing anything else. This is a good day to do a bookbinding tutorial. So here we are. I've set up everything we need, including my coffee and some flowers. And we're gonna get started. The kind of binding that I do is called kettle stitch. That's the stitching. And it looks like this. And the kind of covers I do are very low tech, um, handmade uh, fabric covers. The fabric is covering cardstock. I do have some book board and book board is a nicer way to do it, but then the binding is, um, the attachment of the book board is a little more complicated. It's a little harder because it's so heavy and thick. So I find that cardstock makes a nice paperback fabric covered journal style book and I never cover my binding. I really like how it looks, so I never cover it up. If you wanna cover it, if you don't like how it looks, you can find that on the internet. I don't know how to cover it, so I leave it blank. But I like it, I never learned how on purpose. And the two kinds of paper books that I make are watercolor paper, and that's this one. This is watercolor paper. Uh, nice, thick watercolor paper, I really enjoy that. And the other kind is super simple with printer paper. It's not as nice looking. It's just white printer paper folded uh, in half. So that makes a size this size. And it's, um, the nice thing about that is that you would have everything that you need on hand to just make a book today. Same with this, this is another printer paper. This one is covered in a linen that I got from the fabric store. This is covered with a, um, what is this, hemp? No, it's flax. I don't remember, it's something. It's either flax or hemp, but it's not, it looks kind of like linen, but it's not linen. Um, and this was an old pair of pants that I cut off because they were too long for me. And that's why you have this funny pants seam right here. It was a, a sweet grass, I think is the brand of these pants and they didn't fit me. And so I made them into capri pants and I used the bottoms to make this book. The other one, this is just some cotton from Joann's and this is what I have here for today. The other things I have are a hole making template. This is mine, do you see the holes? I've been using this since I started making books and it says at the top, book binding hole guide and at the bottom it says, do not throw away. On the back it says, do not throw away, book binding hole guide. So I use this when I'm making either, uh, either paper because the uh, holes are evenly spaced but I'm going to show you how to make your book guide. This is a fork. We bent down the tines, the middle tines of the fork, we bent because I wanted this to make holes for book binding. This is how you make the holes. Okay, I'm using watercolor paper today. So you take your paper and you fold it in half like this carefully so that it's pretty even. Although in homemade books, if it's a little wonky, it doesn't matter much to me when I get them a little wonky, as long as they don't look terrible. Fold it in half like that and you open it up again. I have a strip of leather from some leather scraps that we have and I have a board that I think was in the yard. Uh, and you put the leather on the board so that you don't puncture the surface that you're working on. And you open up your sheet of paper. This is to make the guide, okay? This is, this is the way I make a guide. Perfect, thank you. So I take my fork and I just kind of eyeball along the crease I've made where I want my spots, where I want my holes. And I make a little mark. It's just like marking a wall. So I make two and then I move down so that the top tine is in that first, that second dent and I press again, and I move down into that dent, and I press again. 
And this makes a very evenly spaced set of holes that I will then go back and punch through. These are just markings. If I don't like it, I can redo it. And again, this is just, you can do this with every page or every uh, collection of pages, which is called a signature. You can do that with every one, but I prefer to use a template that I've made. All right, so here we go. I've done a pretty good job. Sometimes I get the, the top and the bottom a little bit more badly spaced, but this is pretty good. Not bad. Um, an important tool to have, which you can poke with your fork, but I have an awl. Um, things that you can use that are not an awl is the point of a knife or uh, what's something pointy. Really, you just need a pointy, a point, a point. Um, a pointy knife, a, a kebab skewer. Um, you could probably use, if you have any really sharp knitting needles, you could use a knitting needle. You just need something really sharp, okay? And all is really good because it's quite sharp and it will go through um, a lot of papers at once. This all is really special to us. Um, it was made by a friend, uh, an Instagram friend out of an antler and um, iron. So. You take your awl then, and if you're happy with where your marks are, you just punch. And you punch through pretty hard. There's Sylvie talking to us. You punch through pretty hard every hole, all the way down. Okay, and again, this is your template, but this is what you do with the regular thing too. And if they're not perfect, this is an imperfect book. This is for fun. All right, so then you've got your template. Uh, sometimes I have to go back and make the holes a little bigger so I can see them a little better. But as you use your template, the holes will inevitably get bigger as you use it. So there we go, template, all done. After you have your template done, you're ready to put together your pages and fold them into signatures, they're called, and then punch holes through the signatures. I tend to do signatures that are about four or five pages folded together. So I'm using watercolor paper today. I'm using watercolor paper today and I'm going to count out four. Four is a good amount. One, two, three, four. And you just, you don't need this. Oh, you do need that. Sorry. All right, I've got four pages of watercolor paper nicely together. I'm just gonna fold them together. Doing less, you know, when you make a fold of a group of papers, you get that kind of stair-step look where the papers meet. So the less you do, the less obvious that stair-step look is going to be. So I do four of watercolor paper, and I think I do five of printer paper, but you can do as many as you want. And again, if it's a little crooked, it just adds character. Okay, this is called a signature. It's a group of pages um, that are all collected together. So this is a group of eight pages in all because it's four pieces of paper folded together. And you can make as many signatures as you want. This is a different kind of watercolor paper. Uh, and I made these signatures a while back. I've been saving them for a special book that I'm making for someone. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, I have six signatures, and I believe they are eight pages each. But they might be, uh, hang on, one, two, three, four, they're eight pages each. So I've got six signatures of eight pages each. And when you sew them together, they'll be tighter together. So this one will be about like that when it's all sewn up. It will be not quite so, you know, huge as that. So you make as many folds as you want. I tend to do this first. Two, three, four. I make my signatures together first. And then I'll have the pile that I can just work through, uh, kind of assembly line style is the way I do stuff. I do all of one task before moving on to the next. So I'm making my signatures. <laughs> pages each folded to be eight pages. 
and this is my this is my bundle and this will eventually be what is the book. Once you've made your signatures, the next step is to punch the holes in each one. Hi Sylvie. So what you do is on your board, covered with your leather, um, the leather is really just to protect your eye. You lay out your open signature and on top of that you put your template. You put, you open up the template and you put it on the inside. Sometimes I tap it together to make sure it lines up pretty well, pretty well. And then you take your awl, that's when you take your awl and you punch the holes. You're gonna have to punch pretty hard and you might have to go through twice. You're gonna punch all the way down the template, hole to hole with your awl, making nice accessible spots all the way down. This is kind of therapeutic. Just like that. You look and make sure that all the holes go all the way through because you are going to be sewing this. It just needs to be big enough holes for a needle to go through. And I think I've done a pretty good job here. Mm -hmm.